ओके आई नो यू आर वेटेड फॉर दिस सीरीज एंड इट्स बिन सम टाइम बट देर आर लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स गोइंग ऑन इन माई लाइफ लेटली एंड आई डिड नॉट वॉन्ट टू जस्ट रश इन विद द वीडियोज जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ इट सो दैट दैट बट नंद लेस वे फाइनली हियर सो दिस इज रोग एसन जी लेट्स टॉक अबाउट वॉट आफ्टर रिकॉन एंड हाउ वी कैन एक्चुअली यूज द डेटा दैट वी गैदर्ड first things first if you are here looking for some secret formula and some magic mantras which will help you just to pop bugs you are in the wrong place it was a pleasure having you you may please leave this video is not for you there is no secret there is no magic one click formula which will help you to pop bugs the road just goes uphill from here and only those of you who are consistent will be able to make it but don't worry i'll try to be your guide throughout this journey secondly all of these might seem very vague there might be a thousand ways to do a single thing so that doesn't necessarily mean that my way of doing it or your way of doing it should be the same or one of us is wrong something that works for me might not work for you and maybe vice versa so gather the knowledge but experiment with everything and try to find out what actually works for you the best finally before jumping into the topic let me tell you there are a lot of things you can do it's quite obvious that i do not no everything or i do not even try out everything so here i'll try to show you the things i personally do and the most easy and common stuff you could try out which will help you build a good foundation and you can further pick up from there okay enough of this nonsense let's dive right in okay subdomains well subdomains are probably the most common thing and the first thing which you will try to find out for any target and how we can find those subdomains We have already covered that in the previous series, so if you haven't watched that, check that out. Now, considering we have all the live subdomains of the target, what can we actually do with the subdomains? How we can actually use those subdomains for our hacking? Well, again, there are a lot of things which you can do with the subdomains, but today we'll cover the most common ones which you could try out. The most common and trivial thing which you could try out is manually go through all the subdomains, sort out the interesting ones. and open them in your browser and see what those look like so for example here this is my vps and this is all the data that we have gathered through the previous series so let's see what we have in web domains these are all the live web domains which we had sorted out now what could be interesting this is very subjective and specific thing which will come only with experience as you try to find out more bugs as you will find out more bugs as you will hack more and more you will eventually figure out what is interesting and what are the interesting keywords which if present in a subdomain might be containing bugs or might be an interesting thing to look at so this is something which will come with experience but as a beginner you could try to find stuff like let's say maybe staging as you can see staging or maybe dev because staging and dev environments are generally less focused on for security stuff so you could find a lot of bugs there and another thing is you could try to find any uncommon name or uncommon keyword in the subdomain and you could check that out if it has anything interesting or not so for example maybe let's see if we have something here see here some there is access india access hyphen india so maybe it's some kind of an access portal or something so that might be interesting here there's an ec2 so maybe this could be something related to aws so that can be bugs related to aws here is payments portal so that sounds interesting as well and stuff like that you get the idea right this is the most basic and naive way to check out for any interesting subdomains and start with your hacking right away the next thing which you could try out is let's say there are a lot of subdomains as you can see here so there are almost 3000 subdomains here and manually going through each and every one of those and sorting out the interesting ones might seem a bit tedious task especially if you are a beginner so the next thing which you could try out is screenshot each and every subdomains and go through the screenshots 
and try to find if there is anything interesting on a particular subdomain and start hacking on that subdomain and how we can do that again there are a lot of tools for that and some of those are eyewitness and maybe go witness i guess but here let's see eyewitness and what's the concept like so here is a very simple command there are a lot of things again there are a lot of flags it's a very extensive tool you could check that out i'll post the link in the description of course but here just as an example for a single domain you provide a single flag and enter so what it does is it will try to take a screenshot of the home page of each and every subdomain that you have provided and it will create a very good html report which you could then view in your browser itself but since here i am running it on a vps i won't be able to view the report directly here but you could just try to copy all the contents on your local device and try to view that and if you are running the tool locally itself you could directly view the report but nonetheless let's see what the contents are like so it will save all the screenshots in the screens folder something like this and also it will save the source code as well in the source folder so something like this the source code is saved as well and the screenshots of the home page are saved as well so you could go through each and every screenshot and see if there is any information leakage directly out there or if there is any admin panel or any panel custom panel is directly accessible there's a bug right there and if not you could check if there are any interesting functions or any interesting things for you to look at on that subdomain and start hacking on that subdomain itself so that's one thing and also another thing which you could try out for the subdomains is grepping or looking for secrets or api keys or tokens or anything of that nature in the source code itself so maybe you could do something like you get an idea something like this again this might seem very trivial but this is what we actually do and this is what everyone actually does this is the thing as i already warned you there are no secrets but there might be secrets in the source code so yeah these are the two things which you could try out take screenshot of all the subdomains and look through the screenshots find any interesting subdomain and start hacking with it and the next thing was to grab for any api keys or tokens or secrets or anything of that nature from the source code itself so that's another thing which you could do with the subdomains now the next thing is javascript files well subdomains might not directly give us something or anything at all but these are like the basic ingredients which we will need to make something extraordinary and we have already covered this in the previous series itself to get the javascript files for any target and that's where the subdomains come handy to us and why am i again mentioning this here even if i have covered it in the previous videos because here i want to talk about what are the things which you can actually do with those subdomains and how will the subdomains help us in hacking so that is a very crucial thing which will help us in our hacking maybe not directly but indirectly and what we can do with those javascript files we could again crap out secrets or api keys or any tokens or any credentials that might be hard coded from those javascript files and since we have a lot of subdomains we had around 3000 subdomains so imagine maybe even 3 javascript files as a minimum for each subdomain there will be a lot of javascript files for us and out of all those javascript files even if a single javascript file contains some sensitive information there is a bug right there for you so that is why i again mention this here because this is a very important thing which subdomains help us to do now another thing which the subdomains help us to do is spider the whole subdomain and gather all the links related to that subdomain itself and thus related to our target itself so what spidering does is it's something like gau and webex which we already covered in the previous videos again but what actually spidering is that we will try to crawl the whole web application or the whole subdomain and cover each and every links or subdomains or javascript files whatever we come across and save those links which will again further aid in our hacking process and we can use those urls somewhere in the future let's see how it looks like again as you can imagine there are a lot of tools for the same thing but here we'll try to crawl the subdomains using hack crawler so let's see and again there are a lot of flags and things 
you, you can play around with let's see as you can see there are a lot of flags a lot of things which you could try out and mess with the whole tool but here for the sake of this video we'll just try to see what the basic usage is like and here the depth flag acts like recursion so for example when crawling the web application the crawler comes across a link and what it does is it tries to again crawl into that link as well i hope you get an idea and here we can define the depth of the crawler so let's just see how it looks like so right off the bat it gathered a lot of links urls whatever you want to call it and here on the left side it will show the source from where the link is fetched so these robots means it gathered this from the robots.txt here it says form so it might be a form and javascript so these are all the javascript files urls these are all the urls it came across subdomains it also saves all the subdomains it comes across so this is how all the links are gathered this is what crawling looks like and this is something similar to gau or wayback which we use to try and get the urls of the web application or urls of the target but this is much more accurate and why because it actually crawls the web application which is currently live and thus all the links are working and you do not need to sort out or check for any broken links or any legacy links or something like that so this is another thing which the subdomains help us to do and as you can imagine crawling all the 3000 subdomains might give a lot of links to us and those links might contain a lot of juicy information and we'll cover that further as well but for the sake of this video and for the sake of subdomains, subdomains again help us to get the URL by crawling that web application or that particular subdomain. This might not help us directly, but as we are talking about how subdomains actually help us in hacking, I wanted to cover this. Just like JavaScript files, it will indirectly help us in the future. So let's just save these URLs for now. And again, as we talked in the video for URLs, we could try to check out for any links which might be leaking sensitive information, any new subdomains which are found. We could again crawl those and check for any links in those. We could check out for any unauthenticated endpoints or any admin panels and stuff like that. So this is it. This is crawling. This is something as well which you couldn't do with the subdomains. Now, previously we talked about screenshotting each and every subdomain and checking that out. But as you can imagine, screenshotting 3000 subdomains and creating results will take some time. And if you are not much of a visual guy or if you are comfortable with the command line itself, what you can do is you can try to fetch the status code or the title of the web page and directly continue with your hacking or directly select your target based upon that itself. And what I'm trying to say is, let's see. So here we have our web domains and it looks something like this. So there might be a lot of tools for something which we want to achieve here or which I'm trying to say, but here we will try to achieve our thing using HTTPX by project discovery. Let's see. We just pipe it through HTTPX and maybe let's say status code. There are again a lot of flags. You could play around with those. But for the sake of this video, let's see these two things. Okay, of course, status. So you can see, it will give us the name of the URL or the name of the particular subdomain, the status code which is returned and the title which is shown on the web page itself so what you can do is you can try to see any 200 okay domains or maybe 401 or 403 if you want to check any bypasses or something like that and also you could check for any interesting titles which you could find out so for example maybe there is a subdomain hosted on wordpress so it will show in the title or it maybe it's some internal dashboard which is exposed it will again show in the title itself so this way a lot of your time will be saved and you could directly jump onto the interesting things and save yourself from getting duped on a p1 bug so that's that and let's see if we can get something interesting in the title or something so most of these seem 403 access denied but here we can see vmware horizon so maybe this is something interesting and this is something you could check out and here we see some pki might not be interesting but something like this you might see any anomaly in the title itself and 
that way you could pursue or you could go through that subdomain and start hacking on that and by start hacking on the subdomain i mean no magic just open that subdomain in your browser fire up up traverse to the web application check for xss cos cross site scripting whatever the usual os top 10 bugs are there this is just to like determine how we can figure out what subdomain to hack on of course if there is any subdomain which ha- which is maybe an internal dashboard or maybe something exposed it is directly a bug there but this is something indirect which will be the case most of the times if you are as lucky as me you won't be finding any exposed dashboard or something like that usually you may come across those but considering your luck is as good as mine you might not so this is just to tell you or this is just to help you figure out how you can choose a subdomain to start hacking on so this was maybe you can say a faster alternative to screenshotting each and everything and looking that way so you could try this as well finally just like we can fetch the javascript file using the subdomains we could also of course fetch the technology stacks or directory group force but i just mentioned the javascript files exclusively to give you an idea and i again do not want to mention the technology stacks and brute forcing and the stuff like that which we already covered and unnecessarily make the video long and all of the things i am mentioning here because here i wanted to talk about how we can actually use the data so this is how we are using the data we gather the subdomains and this is how we actually use those subdomains to further gather some more data for our target like the javascript files or the technology stacks and the brute forces as well so there's that and also of course we will further in the series try to see what we can do with the brute forces or the technology stacks and how we can actually use those as well but for the sake of this video i just wanted to give you a brief idea and clear your misconceptions about all the secret stuff or any magical things going around in the background these are all the simple things and i'm mentioning the same thing over and over again just so that you understand that there is actually no secret or no magic it's the same thing which we have to do over and over again and that is how you will find bugs and that is how you will become a hacker you will just have to try each and everything look at each and everything there are no shortcuts of course and eventually you will understand what is interesting what is not interesting what is going on what is not going on and where bugs could be but for that you will have to put in the hours put in the man work and put in your efforts as well that's it and that is the only reason i am repeating the same thing over and over again so that's it for today guys just to summarize all of the bugs you can directly find using subdomains might be any staging or dev environments which do not have any proper access control defined another thing could be any misconfigured cms could be installed any outdated cms could be installed or any custom portal could be installed which is directly accessible to the public any admin portals might be directly accessible to the public any internal dashboards might be directly accessible to the public leaking sensitive information etc etc so these are just the basic things or these are just the most common things which you can imagine directly finding in the subdomain itself so yeah i hope you liked the video and maybe at least learned something from the video thank you so much for watching guys stay safe keep hacking and i'll see you in the next one